Hey there students, so in this clip we're going to be going over the derivation um, of the product formula for complex numbers in full. So what we're going to do is, uh, let's write down what the formula is first and then we're going to go ahead and, and derive it, okay? So what is the uh, product formula for complex numbers in polar form? Well, if uh, we have two complex numbers, let's see, we have Z1 equals um, R sub 1 of uh, cosine theta 1 plus I sine theta 1 and, uh, and another uh, complex number Z2 in polar form given by R2 times cosine theta 2 plus I sine theta 2 then the product the product um, Z1 Z2 times Z2 is given by the product of the radii R1 R2 uh, times the cosine of the sum of the angles theta 1 plus theta 2 uh, plus I sine theta 1 plus theta 2. Okay? Alright, so, so this is the product formula for the product of uh, two complex numbers in polar form. So let's go ahead and prove that this formula is in fact true, okay? So before we generate the derivation of the proof, um, we're going to go over some basic for prerequisite formulas or knowledge that you need to know in order to uh, complete this proof, okay? So prerequisite uh, knowledge. All right, three key um, Actually, it's you know, two key pieces of information that you need to know uh, for this formula are your uh, sum and sum identities for sine and cosine. Okay, so you need to remember the sum identities for sine: sine alpha plus beta plus beta equals sine alpha uh, cosine beta plus um, sine beta cosine alpha okay and uh, some identities for cosine cosine alpha plus beta equals cosine alpha cosine beta plus sine alpha sine actually it's minus sine alpha sine beta okay all right so let me fix that sign real quick all right so this is a minus so these are the two formulas that we're going to be I apply within um, our derivation to arrive at a des desired result. Okay, so why am I focusing on the sum and difference identities for sine and cosine? You see, if we look at our target result right here, we, we find out that we have a sum identities for cosine. We add in two angles. You have a sum of angles as a measurement, as an argument for cosine, and a sum of two angles as an argument for sine here. So it's wise for us to uh, s s expect to make use of these two um, identities in our proof. Okay? All right, so let's go ahead and do the derivation of proof. I'm going to call it derivation here. We're going to start with the left side of the equation and see how, if we can end up with the right side, okay? The derivation. We know what Z1 and Z2 are. So um, Z1 times Z2 is going to be um, the product of this Z1 value right here and this Z2 value. So the product of R1 cosine theta 1 plus i sine theta 1 times z2 which is r2 uh, times cosine theta 1 uh, theta 1 plus theta 1 theta 2 plus i sine theta 2 okay the z1 complex number has a subs uh, subscript of 1 and then the Z2 complex number has a subscript of 1, okay? Of 2. Alright, so there you have it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to multiply. Now, we're going to take advantage of the uh, commutative property of multiplication. And we can rewrite this as we can take out the R1 and the R2. And we have R1 times R2. That will be multiplied by, you're multiplying. Uh, cosine theta 1 plus i sine theta 1 
okay? That multiplied by cosine theta 2 plus pi sine theta 2, okay? All right, let's take a look at, I'll take a minute and take a look at what I just uh, wrote down here. See this R1 and this R2, they've been multiplied by each other, so I can put them out here in front, and then I'm left with cosine theta 1 plus I sine theta 1. I just wrote that down, and the other piece, I just write it down, okay? I have this. Now what we're going to do is we're going to distribute these uh, um, complex streak uh, expressions right here by um, boiling it out. So I'm going to multiply first outer and then inner and last. Okay, so I'm just going to distribute it like that. Let's leave the R1 and the, and the um, R2 alone. Okay, so on the outside we have R1 times R2 and then we have times um, cosine theta 1 times cosine theta 2 is going to be cosine theta 1 cosine theta 2 and then cosine theta 1 times i sine theta 2 is going to be plus i cosine theta 1 uh, sine theta 2 okay we've just done the first and the outer now we're going to do the inner S plus I, I um, sine theta 1, cosine theta 2. And then for the last one, we have I times I is I square. I square sine theta 1, sine theta 2. Okay? All right, let's go ahead and rewrite this. Uh, so now, I'm going to bring this R1 and R2 down, move them outside. Because if you take a look at our target, a uh, desired result, R1 and R2 on the outside. So we've already accomplished this portion um, of the proof. Okay? So now, uh, let's see. Put this in parentheses. We have cosine theta 1, cosine theta 2. Now, what is I square? Remember that I square equals negative 1, right? So this is going to become a negative 1. This piece right here will become a negative 1. So that changes this sign to a negative. So I am going to move this over to this place right here. So I'm going to write it as minus sine theta 1 sine theta 2. Okay? So this i squared became this negative right here. So I just move this term next to the cosine theta 1 and cosine theta 2. And I'm left with these two terms that have i's in them. So how about I factor out the i? So plus, I'll factor the i since it's common. This i is common to both terms in the center. So factor that out, i. And then I'm left with, um, let's see, parenthesis. And I'm going to write this as sine theta 2. Using, let's use the reflexive property of multiplication. Actually, commit to the property of multiplication. So I'm going to write this as sine theta 2, cosine theta 1, plus sine theta 1, cosine theta 2. Okay? So what, what do we have here? What we have here is just like what we have up here. The sum identities for sine is what we have here. Okay? So let's take a look at this. That's, that's actually what this is right here. We're gonna, we're gonna simplify that in, in a minute. All right, so let's come to the left side. I'll bring down R1, R2. Now, if you take a look at the left side right here, cosine, cosine, sine, sine, the sine is different. Well, that looks like the cosine identity, right? See this, cosine, cosine, sine, sine, minus, and then it's the different angles. So imagine if this were theta one and theta two, and we plug it in here, we'll get exactly what we have right here, okay? So guess what? This is the expanded form of the sum identities for cosine. So using the uh, formula I just showed you, I can safely assume that, conclude that cosine, this whole expression is cosine theta 1 plus theta 2, all right? Plus i. Now here, um, this is similar to this the sum identities for sine, you have sine, cosine, sine, cosine, and the angle switching around with a plus in the center. So you have sine, cosine, sine, cosine. So this is the expanded form of the sum identities for sine. So I can write this as sine, uh, let's write that again. Write this as um, 
I sine theta 2 plus theta 1. Okay? Plug that out. Almost there. Let's do so, some minor cosmetics and we'll have the final result. Alright, so R1, R2 times cosine theta 1 plus theta 2 plus I sine. Now we know that um, addition uh, commutes, right? The order of addition doesn't matter. So I can write it as theta 1 plus theta 2. Okay? And there goes your uh, product formula for complex numbers. Okay? So that's that. So thank you so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Uh, feel free to subscribe to my channel by clicking up here. And please uh, uh, post a comment down here to tell me what you think. I'll greatly appreciate it. And if you like this video, you can click like. For more clips, come upon the matchgoodservice.com. Thanks again and have a wonderful day.